some vision of homosexuality as a kind of contagion. You walk into the wrong room by mistake where a fragment of a television program happens to be on or somebody wet mentions the word gay and suddenly the whole tenor of your life changes. It's ridiculous. There's the idea that all these 16-year-olds are sort of wondering, you know, shall I be gay or shall I be... So which box shall I tick? What's the matter? And actually, what you're trying to do is you're trying, when you're a kid, to find out what it is that turns you on. It, whatever it is, it'll, it's already plugged in. The program's there. We're just trying to find access to the program, you know? And then that moment, everybody knows that moment if you first kiss. Every male who's gay remembers the first kiss they had with a girl, and nice as she was. It didn't have that electricity that the first kiss it had with a boy. And you knew immediately you did that. You went, ah, that's the difference between stalk and butter. I get it now. The next thing that happens is that the younger of the two boys approaches his teacher very tentatively after the end of a sex education lesson. Depressingly, the result is all too familiar. How do you know if you are? Oh, what? You know. One in ten. Work it out for yourself. Seriously, though. Are you worried about it? I've got a friend. I see. But? Nothing. No buts. Look, if something really is bothering you, if you're confused about certain feelings, you can get help. Like what? Counselling. Help. There are people you can talk to. Experts. What sort of experts? You can see a doctor. A doctor? Put his mind at rest. Your friend's mind. Help straighten him out if that's what's needed. I just want to know more about it, that's all. Maybe I'll get a book out of the library, eh? Yeah, you do that. The sad thing is that this scene is all too familiar. This is exactly what happens uh, in, in Britain today, that up and down the country today, Gay teenagers are, in effect, silently crying out. They need somebody to reassure them, somebody to talk to, somebody to point them in the way of friendly services. And it's almost impossible for teachers to be able to offer them any kind of sympathy or help or counselling. You would have thought, if anyone really cared about the AIDS epidemic, this is one of the first things that they would have organised. Right from years and years ago, they would have realised Yes, one of the crucial things we have to do is to realise that uh, gay men, as they begin their sexual careers, are particularly vulnerable. We need to get good counselling services in there. Because if, if a gay man feels suicidal, if he doesn't think his life is worth living, then why the hell should he look after it? Why should he practise safer sex if he's getting the message from society all around him that he doesn't count, that he doesn't matter, that he's better off dead anyway? Nancy boy. You're odd, right, mate. Queer. Queer. I reckon you're weird. What's it like then? Bit black. McKellen is only another name for the most detestable and despicable creature that ever walked this earth. Homosexuality is only a polite, deceptive euphemism for the most bestial obscenity, in capital letters, and degrading, disgusting, unnatural sexual perversion, contrary to the divine law of Almighty God, who in his infinite wisdom decreed, if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death. Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, William Shakespeare, goes, you barbarous bastard, you perverted pygmy, you devil's poodle, the outdated, evil-spirited, unsophisticated, unenlightened, insane piss-pot McKellen, the buggery expert, the fiendish fucker should surely be put to death. But not before my syphilitic penis is chopped off and rammed down my diseased cancerous throat. 
Sometimes these letters uh, turn into actual death threats. Now scientists believe they know roughly where the gene or genes are which may lead to homosexuality. They found an area at one end of the chromosome which seems to be present in two-thirds of gay men. We should see if young boys from going down the homosexual rule and bring them to the joys of true marriage. That we should dedicate ourselves not for the destruction of young boys, but for their deliverance. The two sides stare at each other across this chasm of incomprehension. One having finally lost patience with centuries of insults, and the other sensing that any acknowledgement would, in some fundamental way, threaten their sense of their own maleness. One of the many victims of this homophobia has been a realistic and rational approach to the threat of AIDS. This was illustrated to graphic effect in a series of incidents two years ago in a town with the largest concentration of gay men in Britain. Quite suddenly, the consultant at the local sexual health clinic in Brighton published a letter announcing that the town had the highest incidence of HIV infection in the country. It was this just absolute bombshell, a crisis. A quarter of all the gay men that are tested at this clinic were positive. Here we were with the highest rate of, infection, rate of infection for gay men in the country, and nothing was being done. Fighting AIDS Brighton, FAB, was set up by a group of gay men in response to this crisis. The local health authority agreed to fund FAB to produce some health education material specifically designed for gay men. Hi. 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 Have you seen the new FAB postcard that we're handing out? The Everything was going well. The response to the card was good. The message was being got across. People were talking about safer sex. People were talking about coming to the workshop. We're actually feeling quite elated. Then we're actually in one of the local clubs distributing the postcard. And we were told by the owner of the club that we had to stop because he just actually heard that the card had been seized. The instant reaction of the scene owner, because he was fearing difficulty with the police, was to tell us not to distribute the card. At about the same time, in the local health newsletter, was this letter from this crazy doctor from Peacehaven talking about uh, stopping gay men from having sex. It was trying to stop safer sex workshops precisely like the kind we were organising from taking place. Now, to me, to use um, health promotion monies to uh, teach male homosexuals how to be better lovers to each other is not an appropriate use of funds because it's a way of promoting male homosexuality, if you think about it. Health authority didn't know how to react. It was kind of vacillating, was it, you know, should it fund this, shouldn't it? Could it talk about it, could it not talk about it? You know, here were these figures, and here was some action, and, and what action was it going to take? And it decided to go for, the, for safety, which was to apologise and calm it all down, threaten not to fund it. The result was, since then, we've not seen a penny of health authority money, and that's over two years ago. Six months later, Fighting AIDS Brighton was again approached, this time by a drug advice agency, to provide specific material for gay drug users. However, a moral panic amongst a number of government ministers conspired to torpedo their efforts. The Education Secretary, John Patton, has ordered an inquiry into the content of a sex education lesson at a school in Leeds. Here was an event happening at the other end of the country, miles away from Brighton, a school nurse was asked about Mars bars parties in a sexual context and all hell breaks loose. I am incensed. Incensed. The very next day, the condom campaign, two million pounds, produced by the Health Education Authority, was shredded by the Health Minister. I thought parts of it were distasteful and indeed downright smutty. Too sensitive. You can't talk to young people about sex. And the Health Authority in Brighton 
same overreaction. Stop it. At the very